Hey there everyone, Hatesh here back again with another video and let's get started with our tic-tac-toe app. In the previous video, I showed you that what we are about to build and why it is important to have such app in your portfolio. In this video, we're going to be continuing with that. Of course, we are going to explore some of the third-party libraries as well, which will help you to understand a little bit reading of the documentation and in general as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Once again, a big shout out to Hashnode for sponsoring this entire series. We are really, really grateful to them and a great tool that they have launched. Uh, so go ahead, check out their AI powered uh, helper tool for all the developers. It's a great, great thing that you should really definitely check this out at least once. Uh, it's really simple. You can visit their website and simply find that. If I'll just show you that uh, pretty quickly, it's you can simply go to Hashnode and here it is, Rix, great name there. And you can check out based on different frameworks, Flutter and all of that. Our React Native is also here. You can ask questions and everything about it. Uh, in this video, uh, I have already created this app, uh, which is 7. It's a boilerplate, just like we have been creating in so far so long. And just waiting for you to see that how this is getting downloaded and installed doesn't make sense since, of course, we are in the app number 7, so we should really save some time. We are going to first get started by installing this new package, which is React Native Vector Icons. This is pretty fantastic, one of the great uh, libraries and packages that we can simply have. So we're going to be using it for the icons of circles and square. You can definitely use X and O's, there is no problem in that. Uh, but I thought let's go ahead and get started. Now I highly recommend whenever you install such packages, go onto their GitHub page because that is mostly the updated one. Yes, this is a pretty active package, but still I would recommend you to simply go up here. Now, before we go ahead and check out this, also uh, check out on YouTube Tic-Tac-Toe Hitesh or just see Tic-Tac-Toe Winning Logic for Programmers. In this particular video, there is no code involved on the YouTube. The whole idea is that how the logic of uh, winning is being declared and how you can have an array of all the values. And from that array, you can design uh, the winning logic, like all the rows are covered, all the columns are covered, the diagonals are covered. So how you can actually do that, that is mentioned in this video. Go ahead and please check this out. This is a reference video, which I make a reference in all the series. So still very active video. Uh, go ahead and check this out. This is really, really important. Coming back, that how we're going to go ahead and install this. This is the GitHub page of that. And again, this is mentioned up directly on the home page. This is where you should be looking at how to install this package. Now, obviously, if you'll scroll this a little bit, you'll find the installation instruction that, hey, you can go ahead and say npm install dash dash save react native vector icons. This is it. This is all what we have to do. Copy this, go back up here, paste it up here, and this should actually install the React Native vector icons. We can definitely go ahead and install types of it as well, in case you want to go ahead and work with the TypeScript as well. Uh, right now, we are going just with the React Native vector icons. That is more uh, and good enough for us. Now, moving back up here, this is not all about it. We have to make some changes. We'll make those changes. Some I'll just mention so that you can do it. Some I'll walk you through. So in case you are on the iOS, you have to browse onto the node modules, React Native Vector Icons, and drag the folder fonts uh, to the projects in Xcode. Make sure your app is checked under Add to Target. So you have to do this. So just drag and drop, nothing much more than that. And also you have to edit the info.plist. So all of your apps, if you, it is an iOS app, there is a must have uh, this particular file. And it should be just right here, uh, info.plist. Let me just check. It might be here. So yes, hit it. here it is, info.plist. It's nothing, it's just a key value pair, so key and strings. Uh, so you have to add one more and simply add this item up here. You can open this up into Xcode as well and work with that. Now, similarly, we have to go and work on with the Android as well. Uh, we have to edit the Android app and build Gradle, not Android build Gradle. So this is the one and we have to just copy this and apply this. So this is an important part. Whenever you're installing any third-party libraries, these things are necessary, we have to do it. Let's go back up here. So let's do at least the Android ones. We'll go into Android, make sure you go into app and then look for uh, build.gradle. And here, I can close this one. And we have to simply apply this. So we'll just go up here, apply section, and we'll just apply our build gradle as well so that it detects all the fonts. Now we can also customize uh, the things like vector icons and all of that. Uh, we won't be doing this. We don't need it actually because we are not customizing any icons. Optionally, we can also do manual installation and all of that. Of course, we are not using this get image source and something. In case you have a plan of doing so, steps are in front of you. Definitely you have to read a little bit, but this is the way how you can actually go ahead and do this. 
So that's our installation of another third party package. It's a pretty popular package in the world of React Native. It provides you a lot of icons and we can go ahead and work with that. Again, it's not a compulsory thing. You can use just O's and X's in the letters. That's all you can do. Uh, but again, this is a good exercise. Everybody should try such exercise once in a while uh, to see that how the third party packages are installed and all of that. So uh, we'll be following the same steps up here as well. Let's go ahead and right click, create a new folder. Uh, let's call this one as SRC. You know the steps. We'll be dragging, dropping app.tsx into this one. Yes, please move and change all the references as well. Did it change the references? I don't think so. Let's see this. Uh, nope, it didn't change any references. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and see the app is going to come up uh, from one directory back. Nope, not one directory back into the current directory, SRC and app. Now, this is a good thing. Sometimes your editor is not that much friendly. It doesn't support you automatically. So you have to manually verify. Since we know the structure of the app very well, we can go ahead and do this. So that's a great thing. All right, so into the source, now it's all good. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is create a new component because our app icons are going to come from the component itself. Let's create a new folder and call this one as components. And inside the components, we'll be creating an icons file. This will be a component, so we'll be calling it as uh, icons.tsx. There we go. RFCE, React Functional Component, looks good. Uh, you can go ahead and modify this as well, no problem at all. Uh, React Import, yes, we'll be needing it. We'll be needing props with children, so let's go ahead and say uh, props with, no, doesn't suggest like that, so let's try this. Props. No, doesn't support like that also. Uh, let me go ahead and import like this. So yeah, manual work, don't like it. Props with children, now it supports that, <laughs> great. Okay, let's import the icon as well. So we're gonna say that I want icon and that icon will be coming up from uh, React Native Vector Icons. This is not an original library. It installs further sub libraries that you can actually target. Uh, one of them is Font Awesome, Font Awesome 5 Pro. Pro is of course, Pro, it's paid, uh, but we can just go ahead and work on with this. Uh, this is going to show you a problem because you haven't installed the types of it. Now, if you'll scroll over, hover over it, it says icon is declared, but its value is never read. Uh, surely we'll read its value, but you can optionally install its type. If it is going to throw an error, uh, we'll definitely install its type. Uh, implicitly has an any type, which is not a good idea. So I'll show you how we can do that if it creates any problem, uh, but we'll use it, no problem at all. First, let's declare a simple props that we'll be passing since we'll be using props with children. So let's go ahead and declare a type just like we have been doing. We'll be saying icons prop, props, and we'll be saying that this will be simply props with children and generic type, which will have an object. This object will say name is going to be of type string. That's all what we have. Now, at the time of returning, uh, we are going to return based on uh, what is being fed to us. So let me first convert this into an arrow function. So const icons is going to be like this. This will be converted into arrow, much better. Okay, here we are going to go ahead and destructure the name. So whatever the props you're passing, I'm interested in just the name. So I'll destructure this one. And at the time of returning up this one, uh, instead of returning like this, uh, like just one icon, we'll be returning based on the cases. You can use if and else as well, but we are going to be using switch and case. So let's go ahead and use a simple switch case. So we'll be evaluating this name and based on the name, it, whatever the value is. So let's just say there could be two value. The first one could be circle. And for this, we'll be returning an icon, of course, a circle icon. So we'll be saying, hey, I want to return an icon. And the icon is going to be name just like this. And it will be circle. You have to really know the font icon awesome name. You can refer to their website or I'll just mention a few of them. So no need to worry on that part. All right. So we are returning icon with a name. We have to provide a size as well. And that size will be, we have already evaluated that. So it's going to be 38. Feel free to just test it out uh, on your own. And I have a color on my notes as well. So feel free to use your own color in case you want to. Otherwise, classic black or classic white is always a good idea. Uh, so this is what we have and uh, we are using this So save this and again this is still showing us a problem that 
I uh, couldn't find the declaration file for the module. So either we have to go for the declaration on our own or I can show you some of the types that you can install. Let me show you the command for that. Uh, go ahead and uh, open up your terminal and just paste this command. And all we have to do is npm install and then at the rate types react native vector icons. I'll show you this as well. Let's go ahead and install this super easy. Now uh, let's go ahead and save this. Probably we need to reload the window. Yep, now it's happy. Uh, let me show you this. When you open this up and hover onto this one, you'll find this defined types. So there are a lot of types in the React Native since this now supports uh, this React Native things with the TypeScript. You can see the TypeScript supports files and all of them. So there's a lot of types that are mentioned here. Uh, so we have just installed this support package for this. And you can see font awesome, feather, evil icons. There's a lot of them. Uh, it doesn't do too much. It just is a couple of lines, just like we learned in the previous that how we can import the modules. Uh, but this is a safer way of doing the things, especially with this particular package. So now that you know about it. Okay, going back. And of course, you have to reload the windows. Otherwise, it will keep on yelling at you on these things. This yelling, this is okay. This is totally okay. Uh, so we are just evaluating. This is evaluating that uh, explicit has any type which is okay as of now, we will definitely go with that. Uh, so this is copied and we can simply say that, hey, uh, you will be of type this. Now it should be happy. <laughs> All right. So we have gone through with one case. Let's go with another case as well. I'll just go ahead and copy paste this. Another case that we have a circle is covered. So the next one is going to be cross tic-tac-toe. Only two options are there. And instead of the circle thing, we will be uh, using the times Not like that. Let's select this again. This will be times. And of course, we'll be choosing a different color for it. I do have the color code in my notes. There we go. So now the colors are there and the circle, if it is detected, this color and icon. If the cross is detected, this color and icon. All right. Uh, we don't need this break. Uh, this is unnecessary here, but let's just say. And in case of the default, if nothing is passed, because that's a default case when the game is being reset or something, then we're going to simply copy this line. And instead of the break, we'll be just pasting it. This time, we'll be returning an icon of pencil. Again, feel free to choose anything else. I do have a color choice as well, uh, which is really simple. But feel free to choose any other color that you have. Color references, I always keep them in notes before starting the lecture. I don't want to keep on hunting for the colors. All right, so default icons and everything is exported properly. We have learned about two new things. The first is React Native vector icons, which is the font awesome. Also, we have learned about this new type safety as well, that we can actually install the types so that it removes the any. You can actually explicitly declare any. I mentioned that in the TypeScript series, but that's not a good idea. So this is the part one of how we can install the font awesome icons into this. Now, in the next video, we'll be working through with how we can have the snack bars and a couple of other things as well. Uh, we'll be using snack bar as well. Uh, that is super simple to use, but we will also be working through with the winning logic. I expect that you have worked on with this. Uh, in the next video, I'll be just directly importing the winning logic because it's too much of the work to simply uh, write this much of the arrays comparing them. But I'll still walk you through that how this is being done. So that all we are going to do in the next video. Make sure you watch the video, play along with it, learn something from this one, and share your experience on Hashnode. That's all we are asking for. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.